This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at how depreciation fits into the equation. Uh, I think we're all quite happy, uh, or at least we should be from the certificate level, uh, that, that we have two ways of depreciating an asset. Is that their straight line and reducing balance, wasn't it? Okay. Remember, with, with regards to, was it your straight line? Uh, you took your cost, less the residual value, and then divided it by the, the useful economic life, didn't we? And then for the, the reducing balance, uh, you took your carrying value and then multiplied it by a percentage, wasn't it? Okay, the straight line uh, matched the depreciation to the benefits that we got. So the benefits being the equal benefit each year and therefore equal depreciation charges each year, whereby then reducing balance was whereby we got more benefits earlier in the asset's life, so charged more depreciation, wasn't it? Okay, sound familiar? Should be, okay, hopefully it, it is, okay. Uh, we're not going to focus too much on doing any crazy depreciation calculations uh, from the certificate level. Uh, what we want to go through and do is just update it to see how things appear at this level now at F1, whereby it looks more at changing your, your methods of depreciation or changing your estimates. Okay, so if we look at the paragraphs below, uh, I think one thing to note, particularly when we get to some, some later aspects in, in the syllabus, is that depreciation starts when the asset is ready for its intended use. So not when it's actually being used. So that's something that could catch you out in F1, isn't it? You know, the, the asset it is ready for use uh, in August, uh, but it is not being used until November. Uh, when do you start the depreciation? Right? If it's ready in August, you depreciate it from August. Uh, so how many months to the, to the end of that financial reporting year? Okay. Uh, so, so we start it there, if you like, at the earliest point in time. That's essentially when we start to get the benefit, isn't it? As soon as it's ready. Uh, then uh, the key bit now is then looking at your change in estimate. So the estimates that, that, that you have in terms of your changes are residual value. You may change the residual value estimate. You may change uh, the life and the estimate there. Uh, you could even change the, the percentage that you apply to your reducing balance. There's, there's nothing stopping you there changing the method from straight line to reducing balance and vice versa is that okay the key bit is whatever the estimate is that you have changed uh, you apply that to the carrying value at the date of change and then you apply the new estimate so you work out the carrying value and then you either go and apply now the reducing balance method as opposed to straight line you work out the carrying value and now apply your your new life or your new residual value okay the key bit is you work out the carrying value and then apply what is new okay sound all right should be uh, let's go through there and have a look is it at the examples okay uh, so the first one that you've got there is looking at a change in your useful life uh, so it says calculate the amounts to be shown in the financial statements of Ecuador for the year ended the 31st of December. Is it 2015? OK, uh, so it says Ecuador bought an item of property, plant and equipment for 25 million on the 1st of January. Is it 2012 uh, and depreciated it over its useful life? Is it of 10 years? Uh, so based upon that, 25 million, 10 years, is that two and a half million dollars per annum from January 12. Uh, is it the December 2014? Uh, so 12, 13, 14, that's three years later. Uh, the asset's remaining life was estimated at five years. So what we're going to do is with that 31st of December 2014, subsequent years, we will depreciate that asset over five years. But what we need to do there is we need to apply that, don't we, to the carrying value. OK, so let's go through and have a play around with it and make sure that we are happy. OK, so what we need to do is we need to work out the carrying value, don't we? 
at the 31st of December, was it there 2014? So if that's the case, we had the cost, which was the 1st of the 1st, 2012, which was the act $25 million, wasn't it? Okay. Uh, we need to charge, is it depreciation? Is it there, I think, for for three years, isn't it? For all of 12, 13, and 14. Okay. So that's my 25. Uh, was it there for 10 years? Multiplied by three. Is that $7.5 million? Okay. Uh, netting that off. Does that give me $17.5 million at the 31st of December 2014? Okay. Uh, what we then go through and do, isn't it, is that we then need to look at, is it 2015? Because that was the year that we had within the question. So what you've got now is that to work out the depreciation, the depreciation takes your carrying value, which was 17.5 million, and divides that, is it there, by five years. That's the remaining life, isn't it? Uh, so that means now that we have, is it 3.5 million, or 3 million 500 thousand? So that's the figure that goes, isn't it, into your statement of profit or loss. And then the carrying value is your $17.5 million less the $3.5 million. Which gives me $14 million, which goes to the statement of financial position doesn't it okay there we go happy with that no yes if you're not rework it rewind the video back have a check see that you're happy with it and then the key bit that you've got there within that question isn't it is that the initial change took place on december 14 okay so that was three years since the acquisition and then the next year is 2015 isn't it so the carrying value at the end of the previous year, 2014, is then used, isn't it, to work out the subsequent depreciation. Uh, let's have a look at the other example, uh, whereby you have, is it a change in method? Okay, so either straight line to reducing balance or reducing balance to straight line, one way or the other. Doesn't matter. Whichever way you're going, you need to work out the carrying value at the date of change, isn't it? Okay. Uh, this example, ugh, it's horrible, but we'll go through and have a look at it. Uh, so it says, what would be the depreciation charge? Is it there for the year ended December X9? Okay. Uh, so it says a lorry was purchased for $80,000. So that's my initial cost. That's why it's a horrible example, because it was done on the 1st of January X4. It's years ago, isn't it? Okay. Uh, when its useful life is estimated to be 10 years with a residual value of 10. However, the policy was 20% reducing balance. Okay. Uh, it then says, is it on the 1st of January X9? The directors have now decided that to give a fair presentation, a depreciation policy of straight line over the life should be followed and there's been no change in the estimate of the life as a result. I think the key bit there is to think to work out the carrying value at January X9, how many years has the asset been depreciated for? Well, all of X4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so from, is it X4 to X9? There are five years of depreciation. Uh, from January X9 onwards, we're going to apply it straight line. And if there's been no change in the original life, if it was originally 10 years, 
then what you've got there is that there are five years still to go. So whatever carrying value we work out, we will depreciate that over the final five years of the asset's life. Uh, to go through and work out the figures, uh, to work out the carrying value, uh, I think the, the, the notes at the back do it in a detailed, long-handed way. You don't have the time within the exam to do it the long-handed way. So if it is 20% reducing balance, that means that the carrying value each year will be 80% of the original value. There are five years, so I need to multiply... So 80,000 by 80% five times. Okay, it saves you doing 80,000 multiplied by 20% and then deducting that figure from the 80 to work out the carrying value, taking 20% of that carrying value, deducting it, and then, yeah. Key bit, 20% reducing balance means that after each year, there will be 80% of that balance remaining. Okay, if you tap that into your calculator, I think you end up, is it with two six? 214. Okay, check if you haven't, you multiplied by 80% and too many times or too few times. Uh, and to go through there and work out the depreciation, you take your carrying value of 26214 and divide it, is it by the five years? Tapping that on your calculator gives you 524. Voila, as they like to say in France. Okay, there we go. I think the hardest bit of it, apart from the, the reducing balance method of depreciation, is the counting on the fingers. And I'll say that so many times as we, we go through the, the, the overall course. Yeah, dates are crucial. And if you make a mistake on the date, you get the question wrong. So read the questions carefully and don't be embarrassed to count on your fingers. Okay. Other than that, I'll see you in the next little session when we begin to look at the revaluation model. Again, another little bit of revision with bells on top from your certificate level. See you then.